and welcome. I am Piers Ridyard, CEO of RDX Works, a core developer of the decentralized finance protocol Radix, a public ledger entirely focused on bringing DeFi into the mainstream. This is our podcast, The DeFi Download, a show about decentralized finance and all things crypto, where we dive into the details of the projects, assets, and services that are powering the DeFi revolution. Today, I am joined by Himayan co-founder of and CEO of Fetch.ai. Fetch.ai is an artificial intelligence and machine learning based blockchain platform populated with your digital twins, intelligent digital twins who learn and deliver solutions to make your life easier. Amayan, it's wonderful to have you on the show. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Piers, for inviting. Appreciate it. So Fetch Fetch is uh, it, it has been a, has been was launched uh, in 2017. Is that right? 2017, yeah, we, 2018. Yeah, end of 2017, uh, mainly 2018, and then we did uh, the IEO. Uh, we were the second launchpad, Binance launchpad IEO. Nice. How how was that as an experience? Uh, it's it's brilliant. It's uh, yeah, it, it was new. We were quite we were kind of right in the beginning of it. So. Yep. Um, yeah, it was a new experience. It was a new thing. ICOs were dead, and IEOs were kind of starting to cut around uh, as as things move on. Um, so yeah, it was it was quite a quite an experience. So we raised, I think, six or seven million in like a few seconds, which these days mean nothing because you could raise probably a hundred million in the same time. Uh, but yeah, so that's um, really that's how we started, and we started. Um, yeah, we had good relationship with Binance when we were doing that. And yeah, so it was quite it was quite a good experience, I, I should say. Really cool. And like I, I always find it interesting to see how these sort of projects develop over time. So like when you were when you were when you guys were fresh and new in twenty seventeen, uh, late twenty seventeen, early twenty eighteen, what 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 was the vision of the platform and like how is that how is that, if it has changed, changed over the years to what it is now? That, that's, that's uh, yeah, it's quite good to look at things in hindsight, look back and see what we um, started with. Uh, but what is quite nice is that we're kind of in the same place. We are building the same same thing. And, uh, yeah, we uh, obviously you have to overcome a few hurdles. And, you know, so we started off um, by saying that we need to bring machine learning and AI and democratize it. Uh, my background was from DeepMind and we saw issues with having this, this machine intelligence, which is in control of one big kind of corporation. And uh, the, the feeling which, which is where myself and my co-founders started from was that we need to democratize machine learning and AI. Um, again, the space was pretty, uh, pretty empty. It was, pretty new, everything was new. So we looked around and we said, okay, I mean, blockchain is the very natural fit and uh, we fit in quite nicely in it. So they, so so we chose that, you know, we need to build this machine learning AI tools which enable people to actually build and deploy machine learning and AI in a kind of a much simpler but more democratized manner rather than going to big corporations. Because we all know the, the resource is limited. There's not that many people who fully understand how to develop machine learning and AI. So we wanted to make it easier and reduce the barrier. And so that's that was where we started from. And you know, I really am pleased to say that we are now at a place where we have a lot of the tools that we talked about. And we're now at a stage where we are inviting the ecosystem projects to now start building on the Fetch network. And and that's uh, and, and during this whole process, it was quite an interesting process whereby we we went and started to do looking at our own chain because uh, Ethereum just wasn't suitable, um, as you know. Uh, the speed was low, you know, cost is too high, and you can't do machine learning AI. You can't you can't really do anything. <laughs> I mean, even DeFi is becoming quite prohibitive. Although there are other tools, but as soon as you start leaving the main chain, the security kind of uh, decreases in one way or another. I mean, I, I could see there's plenty of tools which which enable you to do all of that, but it's much easier, much simpler if you actually um, start from a chain where you're native to that chain and you can run 
algorithms, you can run learning, you can run uh, cryptographic tools all in one place. So that's that's really what we kind of work towards. But but having said that, it's quite important to have interoperability. You don't know which chain uh, is, you know, where the utility is going to come from. In the beginning, there's plenty of ecosystems like, uh, you know, Ethereum is the biggest, but there was like Solana and we looked at Polkadot and Cosmos. So we decided to go, we, we thought we should pivot towards at least one of them and we felt Cosmos was the right one. So we pivoted on Cosmos. So we ha- it's a, so we fetch is like a Cosmos chain, Co- Cosmos based chain. Mm-hmm. And the tools are uh, mostly built for Cosmos and Ethereum at this point, but we, we are quite, agnostic of chain. So all the tools we're building um, are chain agnostic effectively. Okay. So let, let, let's let's dive into this concept of democratizing AI. What like what what does that mean? Um, I mean AI is a very generalized term, but uh, let's let's think of uh, machine learning and other algorithms. So if I just if I take it that way. Um, it's if you look at how currently we work, there is this uh, small group or a very small percentage of companies and people who actually know how to do machine learning, right? Uh, You put in data and you get the output, you get the um, uh, kind of what, what the model itself and then the prediction. And, you know, it's, that's the technical advantage. That's the financial advantage. Effectively, if you can predict the, uh, different things you can predict the price you can predict it with like 90 percent accuracy and the, the whole uh, democratization means that you one you're gonna bring it down to everybody so that everybody can use it um and then second the data which exists on all the chains is now i mean that's the concept of blockchain it's open to everybody so how do you take that open data and you take and you kind of create these machine learning algorithms, you create the machine learning models, and then bring it to the masses. So how do you, um, so that people can build projects without trying to build this complex um, whole machine learning ecosystem themselves? So, I mean, like my understanding of machine learning is is, is probably noob level um, in terms of actually how you build and operate a, a machine learning algorithm. but my like my uh, my assumption is 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 that there are sort of two great complexities in machine learning the first is um knowing how to ask the questions of the system in the first place and the other is feeding it with data that will allow you to get a useful output from sure. the questions that you put it into it right so like i want to know um I, so so can you give me some examples of the kind of questions that you could ask of a machine learning algorithm in this open data space of, of a of a public ledger uh, and then what the what what the difference between you know an individual trying to build that model that creates good predictive outcomes versus using something like fetch.ai that that that, that shortcuts these difficult to do things that allow people to have democratized access to the, the, these systems in the first place. Yeah. So, so, so I'll, I'll just um, kind of give you a little bit of context and then uh, perhaps I can go through with you uh, an example. So the context is why do you need machine learning? Um, mm-hmm. So, and, and the whole point of machine learning algorithm is to either predict uh, to do some action at the end. So, for example, if you're doing price prediction, if you're doing price prediction of a commodity or a or a token, which is a lot more difficult because you know, there's many elements, you want to do a price prediction uh, like maybe a, a very skilled trader might want to do, and you then what you do is you take an action based on that prediction because. You know, if if you know where the price is going, what you're going to do is, you know, either you're going to go long or short. You're going to take that action. So, so really, the the components which actually utilize the machine learning is that action. Because let's say, I, I, I mean, really bringing it down to some real kind of world example. So, if you can predict, or you go to um, 
you know, weather prediction site and it says it's going to be 90% chance that it's going to rain in the next uh, couple of hours, uh, the action that you will take based on that is you'll, you'll either wear a rain jacket or you take an umbrella, you take a car rather than walk or cycle. So it's the action which comes after which needs to be taken. So, so now if you think about, let's say, talk about automation and you say, um, I have D in DeFi, automation in DeFi, and you have this, uh, let's say you put some tokens in the pool, in the liquidity pool, and you want to avoid rug pulling. So you want to see if there are a few things which happen, the signs are that it's going to be a rug pull. Now, so the algorithm is to predict when the rug pull is going to happen or when you should extract your liquidity. And then you need the automation tools to actually act upon that algorithm and then pull out your liquidity. So that's probably just a very basic example of keeping DeFi in mind. Now, so first thing is you then have to build this uh, model. So now what do you do? You, you can build, you, do you want to build it alone or do you want to build it with um, with the whole network of people, which uh, you can, it, it's completely auditable and you can actually look at the machine learning model. You can see um, how it's training. You can either trust it, you can rate it. You can say, okay, uh, it's going to look at X number of wallets it's going to look at the transactions which are happening on this token. It's going to look at what liquidity sits there. It's going to look at the complete market. It could look at the social media. And it brings all of those things um, effectively in an auditable state so that a network of people can run it. So one person cannot cheat you. Uh, you have a network of people, which is, again, the consensus model, right? So. So you run it in a consensus model. You build this algorithm so you can actually trust this algorithm. You then take that algorithm's output so, so that you connect it with, let's say, a, um, a digital twin or an agent, which is what, what that entity is. It's a piece of software which can do the actual automation. So you give it the intelligence, and then you give it the ability to take the action. So the agent takes the action, the machine learning algorithms, generate that insight on which the agent takes the action so 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 it, so essentially you're compa- you're you're pairing the ability for complex complex analysis to result in some sort of automated financial action on top of a on top of a public ledger absolutely so it doesn't have to be just financial. It could be. Right. It could be anything. It could be, you know, you could actually make a. Let's say you can make a prediction model on protein folding, and then you can take an action on trying out a few things. I mean, you can you can do whatever you kind of want. I mean, we, we're not we're not obviously trying to uh, control what people build on this. What we're just mm-hmm. saying is, here's the tool. So, for example, you can go out and say, okay, um, I don't have data for this, but I can build this model. A, a financial prediction model. So, I mean, somehow uh, we can predict the price of Bitcoin. Okay, I mean, everybody wants to do that, but let's just um, <laughs> probably a bad example. But let's let's say somehow somebody uh, come, comes up with this algorithm and everybody wants to use it. Um, so you, I thought, you I thought it's stock, to, stock to flow, isn't it? Isn't that <laughs> isn't that the algorithm? <laughs> probably. Um, yeah, so it's um, so you deploy the algorithm, but the data can come from different exchanges, and you want to make sure that the data is um, correct. So you you have tools to make sure the data is correct; it's coming in the right form. But nobody can actually cheat it. Nobody can actually um, you know manipulate the data. So there's multiple parties who are actually, uh, let's say, it's like, they're like validators. So they validate what the data is coming in, and you know, you train the model. And then you can say, uh, okay, I'm going to write this automation script in Python or whatever, and I'm going to take the output from there and I'm going to automate that. So you can you can actually then create that action. And so how does, so that, that's, that's super interesting. How does, how does blockchain come into that? Like, so, yeah, yeah so that's, a, that's, a, that's, that's a great question. And we, we ask that question all the time. Is it, I mean, is it, is it okay to just build a centralized model? Um, but then you have this problem of trust, right? So I build this centralized model, 
and I say, oh, everybody, you, you can all trade on this. Now, I could manipulate that. I could manipulate the model. Uh, you don't know. It's a black box. You don't know how the model was trained, right? So if you want to understand all the parameters, if you want to understand, I can I can disclose them to you, but you'll never you'll never be sure. You know, I I could be uh, the wrong character, and I could kind of manipulate it and somehow cheat you out of it. So, and and that's what blockchain is really good for. I mean, keeping the audit, keeping making sure um, all all the, the stakeholders and the participants are playing in the right way. Um, and that's where the the blockchain comes in. And and the second kind of element of that is, if you think about uh, these agents or digital twins, and they're going to transact with mm-hmm. each other, um, yeah. let's say in a peer to peer manner. Um, yeah. If you suddenly then put a centralized uh, entity in the middle who connects them, then you have this problem of. Uh, are you connecting with the right people? I mean, is there is there a democ- uh, is there actually a democratized search to search engine? Because it might be just all ads. I mean, I might take money from somebody and then put somebody else's results in front. So, so you need to have that ability of a search and discovery mechanism, which is again auditable, which is open, and you know you you're kind of connecting with the right peer and you're getting the right price. There's no commission in the middle. Uh, you're not being cheated, you're not being price manipulated. And this applies to everything, nearly. Uh, because if you look at what's happening in the world, uh, the world is now dominated by aggregators. Now, the aggregators could be uh, the banks, big banks, um, who or these, you know, who have much more control on, let's say, pricing of financial instruments. You have the Ubers of the world who know who are, again, aggregators because they're bringing people together and they could optimize for themselves. They, they optimize for themselves. They don't optimize for not necessarily optimize. The first priority of optimization is just themselves, right, because they want to make profit. And then you can look at even even Google falls in that category because if you think about it, the results you see uh, based on the ad money people spend, right? So we're trying to eliminate that um, in, in a way that you can build different solutions, not necessarily just financial solutions. Um, but certainly financial solutions are easier because the data is there, especially in the DeFi space, the data is there. You can actually um, build on that data. You can uh, you can look at it. You can automate it. All of that is much easier in, in the kind of crypto world. Uh, but when you, But that shouldn't limit us from going and building solutions in the real world in the sense of, you know, we have, um, you know, decentralized cab hailing facility or uh, travel booking or ordering service, you know, of any type. It could be a hotel, it could be these delivery um, services. But they're all kind of bringing everything in one kind of aggregation and they want to all make money from it. Um, what we're saying is that there is the technology is gone and done far enough that you don't need to do that. Um, you don't need to have a middleman sitting there earning that commission. What you could easily do is you could connect the the stakeholders. Sure. I mean that 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 second bit is just an argument for public ledgers. It's not specifically an argument for AI on public ledgers, right? It's no. just it's just hey, we we have this. Um, infrastructure financial infrastructure that we can represent economic transactions on top of that can be of you know high complexity and involve many parties and we can do that in a way that's auditable but i mean that that's a i, I agree with that obviously because you know decentralized finance is, is a huge part of that movement and and uh, you know nfts and all this kind of stuff the fir- the first one the first one relies on the first part of that you know, the auditability of the models rather than it being a black box. Does that not rely on you also being able to audit the data on which the model was was yep. trained? Yeah. Uh, so, but, but so, it doesn't so, have to be so so the way you you audit that data, it doesn't have to be uh, the, the privacy doesn't have to be compromised. You can do it in multiple ways and that's the again the tools we have, which is which yeah. enables you, you know, to do things where you know, without compromising the privacy, you can still verify the data. So, so, so where is that data stored? 
uh, on the IPFS. You can you can choose the IPFS. You can choose um, you know it doesn't matter. You can you know one single party could choose whatever they want. They can put it on IPFS. They can put it on centralized storage services. They can put it on their own computer. It's totally up to them. But in wherever it is, it will have to be verified. And that it and and by the way, I mean the the models don't just upgrade. Model only upgrade when the consortium, the the whole the stakeholders can see that the change is a positive change and in the right way. So it tests itself and then upgrades the model. So it doesn't just go upgrade the model if the results coming out are negative or or, or affecting the uh, the results in a negative way. So what does that mean? Sorry, like so you're well, saying that that more if more data means that the model becomes less predictive, you don't update the model. No. So what it means is that if if somebody is trying to manipulate the model by training it on the wrong data, it would reject that upgrade. Okay. Um, and so how, how does it? How does? How do you? So if you can't view the data, how do you validate that it's the wrong data? If the so, if the data so, is. So, Machine learning models generally, when you when you train them, you train them on a certain set of data, and then you test them on the same on the, on the remaining set of data. Right, so, yeah. so you do the same with all this data set, and because it's coming from multiple sources, unless there is kind of a uh, kind of a consensus which appears, uh, then that means the model. So one party which doesn't agree with that consensus is obviously chucked out. So, but so so to to kind of game the model, you'll have to collaborate with all the validators and bring them all. And then you have the staking, which is very similar to the way uh, the whole crypto space works. But so I think these, so quite, these models, yeah. these models exist on the, uh, the, the Cosmos substrate. Is that the right term for the, no, the this, Cos- this is all, the, these are all stored on um, IPFS. And again, I said the, the initiator of the model could, could deploy them, Wherever they want to deploy them, uh, mm. but it could be it could be stored on anywhere. I mean, we're not again, we're not the ones dictating where to store it. Okay, so like as a, as a user, like let's say that I'm 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 a user and I want to I would like uh, your uh, fetch AI to pull my liquidity out of a of a of a liquidity pool when you know the model predicts that there's a that there's a rug, rug, rug pool about to happen. Mm. What what are, what are my steps as a user to set that up? Like, what do I have to do? Uh, you will go to perhaps a a user interface where you can actually set a you can set a, a digital twin or an agent, whatever you want to call that. It's at the moment we call this agents. So you can set up a DeFi agent, which the the triggers are you know if X happens, do Y. So you mm-hmm. can actually spe- uh, specifically ask for a liquidity to be pulled out. Uh, again, that agent cannot move the liquidity anywhere. It will only pull it out from the wallet, which has authorized it to do. So you have full control on it. And then you can actually get it running. Now, when, when we talk about running the agent, you can run it again. You can run it on your own PC. You can run it on your cloud. You can run it on uh, a decentralized cloud. That's, again, that's your choice where you run it. And you just trigger it, and it just keeps monitoring it. But what what I'm also trying to kind of just make a point here is that it's it's not as easy to just train a data without being the ability to actually uh, making sure that the data is assessed in a correct way. It's the right kind of data. So the tools which we are also building is to make sure that the data which is training the model is also uh, vetted in the right way. So, so that's so it's it's quite a and and then on top of that you have this cryptography. So let's say you have data and you want to share it with the model, you have to make sure that the data doesn't go anywhere beyond that, and you don't actually uh, you know the privacy of the data is not compromised. So all the tools required to do that, the cryptography tools which you need to do that, they they should be pretty they need to be made pretty straightforward. So the so any um, developer, even with uh, no knowledge of machine learning, should be able to deploy it. Right, but from from a user point of view, where like, am I just downloading? Am I downloading um, the 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 model from? I, no, I, no, I no, no. It, it's, like... it's not as complex. So, so let's say there's a there's a set of people who build this model, and yep. this model is now 
up and running and it can yep. allow you it can give you a prediction so okay. taking this your point about the defi agent let's say the yep. prediction is going to come uh, via an oracle uh, uh -huh. into your agent which right. is looking for you for that trigger so yep. as soon as that trigger happens so so there's a group of people who built this um machine learning model yep. every time your agent uses that prediction they get paid so the user has to pay for the model uh -huh. to provide that prediction so there's a whole ecosystem here which um kind of it's like a pay as you go kind of pay per prediction uh, model uh, right. and then when your agent then executes the model it, it will automatically execute so you don't have to think about the model you don't have to think about any complex um programming all you need to do is you need to say this is the trigger and this is the action and and you just set it up that's it so for a okay. user it will be a very straightforward thing so i can i can i, I basically get my own personal oracle so to speak yeah. that that i will then pay when my threshold is reached so i will say oh these are the things i want to happen and, and and i'll pay when when those things happen yeah so if you if you think about it once your liquidity is pulled out and you avoid the rug pull uh, you yeah. know that, that's the kind of at that point you have to pay something in terms right. of using it yeah okay Okay, and and so let let's talk about token. You guys have obviously got a token, and there's the secondary mechanic of 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 making a marketplace for the builders of models and the trainers of models. So how how's how's the Fetch AI token work? Yeah, so a Fetch token is, I mean, you know, well, we we know how things go very fast in crypto world. We're now three years old. Uh, the token is three years old, so we're which not, feels we're like three decades, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> we're old news but we're still there um yeah. we're still there but but what is what is what, what is also good is that we're still here um and we still have uh we, we're still building the ecosystem so now we're at a place where we want to invite all the projects to come and build on this on this network and what is happening in the space is when slowly, you say all, all the projects what do you mean by all the projects what projects are you looking for what kind of projects are you looking for so any project which is going to use so for example any projects who's going to do analytics on chain analytics mm -hmm. any project which wants to have an out um outside bringing into blockchain uh, oracles so we have these agent based oracles which can then do complex tasks combined with the machine learning algorithms so if you think about it you know we are going to evolve into more complex systems on uh, on defi on crypto on anywhere because uh the, the the current simplicity of the evm isn't going to continue for too long and that's why you've seen uh new uh vms coming out you know wasm uh vm solana's vm and the reason is because you need to start doing more complex things and that's really um that's really the beginning but ultimately we are going to need these predictions because without this how do you actually uh, make more intelligent decisions you know we can't be just primitive in our approach i mean we are evolving that way i mean as yeah. you can see the defi is getting more and more complex there's a lot more interesting stuff going on but it in its it's still in its infancy at the moment uh, very much so because if you look at the centralized things they're much more complex they have um much more uh, variations much more intelligent uh you know things they can do so ultimately we want we will all go there and that's the kind of tools we are building right but it feels like there's like a, a a set of dependencies in it um if i understand it correctly where like i can't come in as an a, a, as an agent actor to use something in the system unless someone has created built verified a model that does the kind of prediction i care about right so like yeah. i it, it, until there is a rug pool uh, a rug pool model uh prediction model that has been verified i'm not going to trust that as a oracle for my agent based behavior that i want to do so does that not mean that the first projects you need are the people who are actually going to build the models in the first place but then where yeah. do you get how do you match up those people who have a desire for 
paying for an outcome prediction with those people who have the expertise to want to build models in the first place so that you can have that market like how do you bootstrap the marketplace yeah so so there are multiple components so you know the agents exist today and you can do a very simple algorithm and you can say uh you know if this do this do that that's just a very basic automation so for that you don't need to build a big complex model we already have uh, some very simple models kind of available for users to use. We're building a whole marketplace of these predictions. So you can actually say, um, I'm going to deploy this agent. The agent is going to actually, um, is going to use what are the options available? And then you can search through the models and you can say, okay, this is what I want to build. I can just connect it. Uh, but you're absolutely right. Somebody has to build those models. So initially we'll kickstart with some of the models and we'll deploy them. And then will invite people to then start building better and more complex models. So that's, um, of course, that's just a, you know, that's a startup process where, you know, you're kind of kickstarting the whole ecosystem. So, so, so we have those components, but we can actually start from, if you think about something very simple, which is, if you look at graph, we have, uh, you know, you can actually have these, the information, you can go out and just search the chains and you can find different, um, different things which you're interested in just by searching the chain. It doesn't have to be a very complex machine learning model. So those tools are useful straight away out of the box today. Uh, so you could actually say, you know, I, I want to monitor a wallet. I want to continue doing that. I want to see where the the chain is going. I mean, these are these are tools which, let's say, something like um, the graph, the GRT token does. Uh, but we do a little bit more because we make it a bit more intelligent. We have these oracles whereby you can actually take um, input from a lot more mature systems. Again, maybe you have to rely on the verification, So, uh, but that's just a starting strategy. And, and ultimately, we expect this whole thing to kind of... Pe- people to want... Once people have this understanding of what... Uh, this could deliver and how how easy and how much more uh, interesting and complex this whole uh, space evolves into, then you will see you start seeing the need for these tools. So so how do you choose which models to bootstrap first? How, how, how are you guys working out what the market needs as the first set of just like ask the community. Ask the we just ask the community and that's really how it would work. We'll say, okay, well, what do you guys want to do? I mean, we give options. We Once once we know what the community wants, that's when uh, we do. I mean, so for example, DeFi agents, this rug pull issue, that was happening quite a lot. So, you know, the community told us that we need we, we need an agent which we can just set up, not, not to have complex programming knowledge, but just to, I have tokens, I want to hand up my tokens to the agent I want to look after. So, yeah, so we, we know that definitely something uh, the community is looking for, they want. Uh, but again, um, it, it evolves very quickly. So we, we're trying to build a framework where we can, we can deploy these things a lot quicker. Uh, when the demand comes, people can just deploy them. Uh, and we don't want to be the ones deploying them all the time. We want other people to say, okay, uh, I, I really need a solution for this problem, and you can easily put the blocks together and deploy the solution. Got it. And so, where, where so where are you guys right now? What's your um, uh, what's your uh, pos- like? Can you get, are are agents able to be deployed right now? Yes, yes. They, the, the 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 whole framework is up and running. Mm-hmm. Um, we needed to have some upgrades. We were waiting on this uh, Cosmos IBC, so we're now kind of just integrating with that because there's some mm-hmm. changes. So you have interoperability amongst chains. Mm-hmm. The agents can be deployed uh, now. The machine learning models can be deployed now, and they can be connected right now. So, so that's the kind of things we already have. Um, something which we have talked about quite a bit and is... Um, will be released very soon, it's not released yet, is the agent-based oracles, which is um, which is making sure that the oracle network is strong enough and it delivers what we need for the machine learning plus the agents. Because at the moment, there's plenty of oracle um, providers, but they seem not to be able to deliver what we require. Again, we are agnostic. Um, you know, if, if tomorrow they want to start 
providing information which the user wants, they can actually pull in that. So it's pretty flexible. But if you, um, but if there's something which is not available right now, then we are building. Really interesting. Really interesting. Um, and so, like, do you guys have any anything sort of that you'd like to share that's that, that's coming up over the next few months? Yeah, there's. Um, well, we, we're going to be launching an ecosystem fund for projects who are interested in uh, automation and building these models. So we'll be opening that very soon. Um, that that is coming probably over the next couple of months. Um, we will also uh, do some. Uh, hackathons where we will nice. handhold people to actually yeah. build these models and just show them. So there's plenty of videos and uh, documentation which is coming. But what is quite exciting at the moment is the whole Cosmos ecosystem is becoming very alive and the IBC integration and the the ability to interact with other chains. Um, we, we're kind of part of that whereby our agents can actually operate at the moment across all chains. So you can have this huge amount of interoperability of not just moving the tokens out, but also to take action. So you could you could run the, the agent. If you start running the agent on Ethereum, it'll cost you an arm and a leg. But you run the agent on the Fed chain, but you do the action on any chain. So it's um, and and that's really the really cool thing, which is you know you you could if you like if you like Solana, if you like Phantom, if you like. Ethereum, you can stay where you are. You don't have to rewrite the code. You just re have to rewrite the tool on the agent to perform the automation. Uh, so you can just connect that. Awesome. Well, I look forward to having uh, fetch uh, agents on on Radix as well. Then um, it sounds like a super interesting project, um, and I'm sure it's going to be fascinating to see what kind of like complex prediction questions people start to ask of these models. Uh, and what the results of that is. Um, if, if, if people want to get like find out more and get involved in, in the project in any way, where, where should they start? Well, the website is the best place generally. Um, we, have, we have plenty of information there, but maybe sometimes it's too much. So um, <laughs> always, uh, always connect. Like drinking That's from a fire hose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, um, you know, don't, don't get daunted by it. But we, we, we're trying to make it less and more understandable because... Yep. Uh, sometimes you can just use too much you can use too much technology to explain things so so that's the best place to start but reach out to i mean we have a discord channel we have telegram channel reach out to us on those uh, website is a good place but we have plenty of videos as well so if you search uh, fetch videos we kind of show all the use cases because ultimately crypto is going to go out grow outward and bring the rest uh, kind of more um kind of real world utility into crypto as well so this mm -hmm. is and this is the platform which would be ideal for doing that in a very simplistic uh, manner so we're building all the tools to enable that as well awesome well it's been such a pleasure to having you on the show thank you so much for coming on and uh yeah wish you the best of luck for the rest of the year it's it's been a pleasure Piers. thank you for inviting and you know we hopefully we'll work together soon.